Ash dieback is a fungal disease affecting ash trees in the UK at the moment. I mean, it can be very serious because it can kill the whole tree and render it very dangerous. It was introduced to this country about 15, maybe 20 years ago, I and mean, it's really taken a hold now. So we're going to look at a seriously infected um, young ash tree um, just over here. Um, so here we have a young ash tree of um, probably 10 to 15 years old. Um, as you can see, there's lots and lots of epicormic growth. Um, this is the tree's response to stress. Um, 10 or 15 years ago before um, ash dieback appeared, we never used to see epicormic growth on ash trees unless there was something seriously wrong with the tree. Um, but it's more and more common these days. So it's got some classic lesions here, so the sort of blackening of the bark here um, are your lesions and the ends of the new growth are just really, really brittle. Once it's really infected, this will affect the whole tree right the way up to the top um, and can cause some serious safety concerns because branches can literally just drop off. This to me would be a, a stage four ash dieback tree losing about 75% of its canopy. We're going to take you over to a stage one tree now so you can see the difference. So if you look at the canopy of this tree, it's looking fairly healthy. There's some half decent branches on it. It's difficult to tell in the winter, obviously, but there's not that much epicormic growth up there. But when you come down to the bottom, you can start to see that, that it started with some epicormic growth. This looks like it's this year's growth and I would expect to start to see some legions coming on here by spring and some discolouring down the branches here. As I said before, this epicormic growth never used to happen 10 or 15 years ago before ash died back. And this to me would be a stage one tree. We've, we've marked this for removal because it's on the corner of rides that we use fairly regularly for extraction. So some people suggest that by um, cutting um, ash trees that have suffered with ash dieback down and letting them regrow, it might help to solve the problem. And we're stood in a small area of natural regeneration ash. Um, we can see a couple of stems here don't look too bad. And um, we've got some nice kind of green growth here. This is probably two or three years old. Um, but it's certainly started to be infected. Um, and I think, you know, this is a serious concern for the ash trees population. And we've got another one just over here um, that's, you know, less than a year old, maybe two years old. And we've already started to see, um, you know, some serious effects of ash dieback. You can see some diamond shaped legions here. You can see the discoloration in the bark, um, but it's right next to a piece of epicormic growth that looks really, really healthy. This section has died off but this section is still trying to survive. And so one serious consideration is when we're felling um, diseased ash trees, it can be really, really dangerous. If you look at this tree in the background here, there's a lot of dead branch work um, at the top of that tree. And when we fell it, they tend to shatter like smithereens. As experienced contractors, what we tend to do now is use a 100 meter winch line. We'll have the winch um, situated well away or the winchman well away from the shatter zone and we'll, we'll literally pull that tree over after we've done a, a felling cut at the bottom. We never use wedges because the ricochet up the tree can release broken branches and dead branches up in the crown which might harm the, um, harm the tree feller at the bottom. So it's, it's very very important that you either call in a professional or be very very careful when you're felling diseased ash trees.